Hi, this is Gail Sokol, and on today's show, we're going to be opening up the cookie jar, a six-part series. Welcome to Baking Radio. Learn the art and science of baking with author, educator, and award-winning chef, Gail Sokol. Whether you've been baking your whole life, or you're brand new to the world of baking and you're looking to build your confidence and learn new skills in the kitchen, you're in the right place. This is Baking Radio. On today's show, we're going to be opening up the cookie jar and exploring what's inside a six-part series. And I recently had a listener reach out to me and ask me about a problem that she was having when she made one of her favorite types of cookies. So I promised her that I would do some cookie shows, and here they are. Hope you're listening. There are so many different types of cookies, not only within uh, our country, the United States, but worldwide. And within each type, there may be a gazillion recipes available. And I'm actually not exaggerating. I, I tend to exaggerate sometimes, but I'm really not this time. There are soft and chewy cookies, hard and crispy cookies. Everyone has their idea of the perfect cookie. And you can get into like, you know, fights over this because people know exactly what they want from a cookie. So you may recall that I did a previous show on cookie characteristics and a few ways to manipulate them. Um, and I thought it might be fun to actually break down each category of cookie and have a discussion of each. So before I get started, let me, let me just tell you a little story. A while ago, I had an acquaintance call me and she never calls me. Never. She's really just someone that I see in passing. And she was very desperate on the phone. I mean, I thought something was very wrong or something terrible had happened. No, she was just desperate to know her deceased mother-in-law's secret ingredient that she had put into her chocolate chip cookies uh, and her recipe. So until I can begin to channel the dead and become the first chef slash medium, how would I know? So I talked to her for a while and I wanted to know what she put in her cookies. What were the ingredients? Because remember, each recipe is unique. And I, I sort of could tell her what the effect that each ingredient would have on that final cookie. And she kept saying, no, that's not it. Nope, that's not it. So we really couldn't figure it out without seeing her in person and actually making that cookie. Uh, I really couldn't help her. The best advice I had, and this is what I will tell you too, I told her to experiment until she got what she and her family wanted, the specific characteristics of that beloved chocolate chip cookie. And you may want to vary different ingredients. You may want to change up the flour. You may want to add a little more baking soda, um, a different type of sugar. Maybe instead of butter, you add shortening. It depends on what you want. So. I told her to experiment and then we hung up. Now, between you and me, perhaps her mother-in-law left out one or two secret ingredients from the recipe when she handed it over to her. Maybe she didn't want her to have the exact recipe. Hmm, I don't know. Food for thought. But some chefs do this. And, and for that matter, I've had some friends do this to me as well. You ask them, you admire a recipe that they've made, you ask them for that special recipe to write it down, and they leave out an ingredient, and you know they have done that, right? Uh, it can cause some bad feelings, but that ingredient really makes a difference, and it really counts. So if you don't want to give out that recipe, say so. I'm sorry. That's a sec you know, secret recipe. Um, I sort of want to keep it to myself. I sort of want to make it just mine. That's fine. And I've done that. But be honest, folks. If you don't want to give it, don't flub it and just leave out an ingredient because that's not nice. So write down the recipe if you really want to give it to someone or leave it for your family. That's the best advice. Write it down exactly the way you make it so that the next generation can have it. And that's sort of a cool thing. So you can have that recipe forever and leave it to your children, and so on and so on. So let's look at the humble cookie and see what makes each type tick. So first of all, you should know that cookies are broken down into actual categories based on various things. First of all, how they're prepared, how they're shaped for baking, and even how they're placed onto the sheet pan. And you'll know what I mean in a second. 
So let's let's talk about chocolate chip cookies, right? Everyone knows chocolate chip cookies. They're known as a drop cookie. That's the category. It's called the drop cookie because the batter or dough is literally dropped onto the sheet pan before baking. So it's one of the easiest categories to reproduce very quickly, actually. So when you came home from school and or your kids come home from school and they tell you, hey, mom, I need 300 cookies for the next day's bake sale. What type do you think your, your mom made or you think you're going to make? Probably chocolate chip cookies because it's super fast. And because it's a drop cookie, they're easy to prep. They're easy to make and get them in the, and get them in the oven. So the other thing you should know is each cookie type also follows a mixing method. You know how the ingredients are mixed together. Remember that matters, right? I hope you remember that because I've said it many times in other shows. You can't just throw things into a bowl and expect them to turn out exactly the way the cookie you want. There's a method, a way to put them together. So I've done shows in the past that have done uh, for instance, explain the creaming method, for example. And if you remember, the creaming method referred to cakes. So this same creaming method, where you take the softened butter or softened fat of some sort, a solid fat, and you cream it or mix it with the paddle attachment of your electric mixer with granulated sugar or brown sugar, that same method is also used for cookies. So they do share some mixing methods, cookies do, with cakes. But not all chocolate chip cookie recipes or cookie recipes for that matter follow this method. They're not all the creaming method. They're not all any method. There's a crossover. So the other two methods that cookie recipes can follow include the one bowl method, and that's an easy one to remember because I call it the dumping method, um, and other chefs do as well where you basically put wet ingredients into one bowl, dry ingredients into the other, and you put them together. That's the one bowl method. And the egg foam method is the third method. That tends to use a meringue base, you know, your egg whites, sugar. So you're using things like um, uh, your whip attachment on your electric mixer, and you're making things like maybe lady fingers, a meringue cookie, or maybe a little sponge cake. I don't know if anyone out there has ever heard of Madeleine. Little tiny um, spongy cookies that are put in a shell-shaped pan. Very cool recipes for those. So not to confuse you even further, but some cookie categories will cross over into other cookie categories. So it's crazy, right? So let's begin an overview. I'm not going to go into each one in detail. I'm just going to give you an overview on this particular show because I don't want to overwhelm you. We're going to delve into each one in the series as we, as we continue. So there are eight cookie categories. Let's go through each one. Number one, the drop cookie. That's the chocolate chip cookie that I talked about before. Remember, you drop it onto the sheet pan with a spoon or even a ice cream scooper, all right, to get consistently shaped cookies. The next one is known as the refrigerator cookie. And in this type of cookie, the dough is usually stiff. It's not a batter. It's very stiff, almost like Play-Doh. And these cookie doughs are rolled into logs. They're wrapped real tight and they're chilled. You want to get that dough firm. So if it has butter in it, you want that butter to get firm as it was when it was in the refrigerator. And then what you do is you unwrap the roll or the log that you've created and you slice it. And you slice it maybe at one eighth inch thick or one quarter inch thick, you put it on a sheet pan and you bake it off. Um, and their recipes usually have the word refrigerator in them. So you know what type they are. That's the category. Third type, the molded cookie. And this doesn't sound like a good type of cookie, right? Mold, but it's not that type. Molded is the verb, how to mold it. This type of cookie is a stiff dough. It's divided. So usually you take a spoon or an ice cream scoop and you just divide the dough into little balls or little shapes that are um, the exact same size. And then you roll them into balls. Uh, you can moisten your, your hands or put a little uh, nonstick cooking spray on them, roll the dough into balls. And then they're usually rolled into something like sugar or chopped nuts um, and placed on the sheet pan for baking. 
The bar cookie is our fourth category. And the bar cookie is really something like a biscotti. You know what a biscotti is, right? A twice baked Italian cookie. Well, it typically has a very stiff dough. It's shaped into a flattened bar or a log that you flatten out a little on a sheet pan. And instead of chilling it like the refrigerator cookie, you bake it right off. And then you slice it into slices and then you bake it again to get it crisp. So this is known as the bar cookie. The fifth type of cookie is known as the sheet cookie. One of the easiest types to make in mass production is the sheet cookie. So this type of cookie has a loose batter. You spread it, you bake it in a pan that it must, it must have sides to it. So let, let's think of a brownie, um, think of a blondie, even a lemon bar uh, where there's a crumb crust baked in a rectangular pan or a shortbread crust. You push that crust into a rectangular pan, and then you put another filling over it like a lemon filling or whatever you want, and then you bake the whole thing again. And then you let it cool and cut it into bars. The sixth type of cookie is the rolled cookie. So these cookies tend to have a stiff dough. It may need to be chilled and usually is chilled, sometimes up to several hours or even overnight, um, to get firm. And then these cookies are rolled out with a rolling pin and cut into different shapes. So this is where your cookie cutters come in. This is the fun stuff. Before being placed on a sheet pan, sugar cookies, gingerbread cookies, anything like that um, is known as a rolled cookie. The seventh and next to our last cookie type is the piped cookie. So these cookies tend to be made from softer doughs and they can be pushed. So they're soft enough that you can actually push them through a pastry bag that may have been fitted with a pastry tip to form shapes. Think of a spritz cookie. They have these little machines where you put them in with a little die, like a little shape that you push through and you can get little bar cookies, um, those little Swedish cookies that you can actually buy already made. Um, but a lot of people like to make like a spritz cookie. Even lady fingers can be pushed through a pastry bag and shaped into fingers. That's your piped cookie. The last cookie, and certainly not uh, the least cookie, it's one of my favorites, is the wafer cookie. These cookies tend to have very, very thin batters. They're spread out over stencils or over parchment covered sheet pans and baked. They tend to be very malleable when warm, and they can be shaped and molded into anything you want. Wafer cookies are referred to as a tuile. In America, but in French, it's pronounced tui for roof tile because it's so thin, so delicate. As it cools down, the sugar uh, firms up, the granulated sugar that's in it firms up and gets hard and it gets crisp as anything. And they're very, very delicate. So if any, any of them break, I always eat them because I love them so much. Okay. All right. Let's get a grip because it's very, very, very overwhelming, these eight categories of cookies. I know this. Calm down. Take a breath, deep breath. All about this cookie mania, it's a little crazy. So before we go any further, let's talk about what is a cookie. If you look at a true definition of the cookie, you see why there is some confusion. A cookie is basically a small sweet cake or pastry. So that clarifies it, right? Not at all. It doesn't clarify anything. It really is very ambiguous, right? A little tiny something. And in French, cookie is biscuit, like a biscuit. It's spelled the word biscuit. So a biscuit's not a cookie in America. A biscuit is like a cracker. But anywhere you could sort of say a sweet biscuit is a cookie. So there's a lot of ambiguity here. So a small cake, any pastry cut into little pieces, anything tiny basically fits the description of a cookie. So anything goes. And that's why there's really so much crossover and so much confusion within the cookie world. So I always get a kick out of the fact that many magazines and a lot of magazines do this. So you watch for this. Okay. You watch for this. Remember this. They will do this around the holidays and they will expound on the wonderful qualities of the whatever cookie, the, 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 the biscotti, the brownie, the lemon bar. 
and they deem it to be the new big thing for the upcoming new year. They really do this. And I'm the one laughing at home as I'm reading that, that, art, that article. And it's great, right? But I remember that this next big thing was the magazine's next big thing, quote unquote, five years earlier and even 10 years before that. So the funny thing about cookies is you can't get rid of them. Each type will always surface again and again and again throughout the years and the generations. And it's true. And you know that. And all over the world, although each country has its own varieties of cookies, there's still some overlap with, cu- with cookies in this country. And we love them all. And there's only one reason for this resurfacing of cookie types that they come back over and over again. Human beings, and I don't care who you are, I don't care where you come from. I don't care what you look like. You all love cookies. Everyone is a cookie lover. I almost guarantee, I really, really guarantee that if we went to another planet and brought a plate of cookies, we would make friends with those inhabitants, whoever they were. Since cookies look like little cakes at times, there are some similarities between them. So if you look at cookies and cakes, both of them together, Both use some similar ingredients like chemical leaveners, right? You don't see many cakes uh, or cookies using yeast. They usually use chemical leaveners like baking powder and baking soda to help them rise, right? And some cookies don't use any leavening agent. So don't think they left it out. Like I know some shortbread recipes when you want the baked cookie uh, to be the same and not change after baking. So very often, the, the chemical leaveners are not in there. You sometimes want the cookie to stay the same. Let's say you shape it or cookie cutter it out. You don't want it to spread. You don't want it to change. So you leave the, the leavener out. And since leavening agents do help things rise, you want to avoid them. So the, you want it the same way before baking as and after baking. You want it to be the same. And very often I will do that if I'm looking for a certain look in a cookie. So the mixing methods for cookies and cakes overlaps, like we talked about before. Remember the creaming method um, and the one bowl method or that dumping method? And even the egg foam method, those are all describing cake and cookie mixing methods, okay? But don't get get, confused or or whacked out about it. It's, It's nothing to get overwhelmed about. The key takeaway is from today's show is to appreciate how many different cookie recipes exist all over the world. And the most important fact, and it is a fact, we love them no matter who we are, no matter where we come from. Well, we will always have cookies. Very, very true. So that's today's show. Um, If you haven't picked up a copy of my most recent book, Baking with Success, which has lots of cookie recipes in it, it is available on Amazon and in bookshops worldwide. If you have any questions, head on over to bakingradio.com and please leave me a message. I would love to answer some of your questions on air. And next week's show, you guessed it, we're opening up the cookie jar again, part two.